In problems 29 through 32, we are told to write the slope-intercept form of the equation of the line that's described. So in this one, we're talking about parallel and perpendicular lines. So number 29, we know it goes through this point, so we know we have an x value and a y value we can use. And it's parallel to this line. Well, recall what does parallel mean? Parallel means that they share the same slope. Their slopes are the same. So if we look at this slope right here, what is the slope of this guy? Well, it's a negative x, so there's really a 1 in front of there, so the slope is a negative 1. So we can use this and do y equals mx plus b, and we can plug our 3 in for y, negative 1 in for m, 1 in for x, and we can solve for that b. And again, the reason that we can use this same slope is because we're told the lines are parallel. So let's go ahead and do that. The 3 goes in for the y, the negative 1 for the m, the 1 for the x, and then plus b. Okay, so that becomes 3 equals negative 1 plus b. And then we just got to go through and add 1 to each side. So I know that my uh, b value is going to be 4. So y equals mx plus b will be y equals negative 1x plus 4. But again, we don't want to see that 1 there, so my final answer will be negative x plus 4, and that looks a little neater. So for 29, we were talking about parallel lines, and our solution is y equals negative x plus 4. In number 30, we know that it goes through this point right there, so again, we have an x and a y we can use, and it's parallel to this line. So we're going to grab that slope. And we know the slope is negative 4 fifths. So we can use that same slope, because if they're parallel, they have the same slope. And then we can use those new points for the x and y. So we begin with y equals mx plus b. So the 3 will go in for our y. Our m is negative 4 fifths. Our x is a negative 5, and then plus b. And since we're going to be multiplying these fractions, I'll go ahead and put it over 1. And it looks like they're both negative, so those negatives will cancel out. And we have some 5s we can cross-cancel right there. So we have 1s all over the place, and then just this 4 right there. So 3 equals 4 plus b. So if we subtract 4 from both sides, b will end up being a negative 1. So once we have our slope and our y-intercept, we can go ahead and write the equation of our new line, which is parallel to our old line, but the thing is that this new line passes through this point. So for number 30, we have y equals negative 4 fifths x minus 1. In number 31, we're told that we have a new line. It's going to pass through negative 1, 1, so we kind of have an x and a y value we can use. We're also told that it's perpendicular, and again, the symbol for perpendicular is like this, so it might show up this way on a test. It wouldn't necessarily say P-E-R-P -E for perpendicular. It might give you the symbol right there, perpendicular to this line. Well, what is the relationship that's uh, for the slopes of lines that are perpendicular to one another? Well, we know right here the slope of this thing is one-half. So a perpendicular slope would have to be what? Well, perpendicular lines we know are going to cross, and the intersection is going to form 90 degree angles, or right angles. But we know there's a nice special relationship between their slopes. We can change the sign, and then take the reciprocal, flip it over. So the original line had a positive slope, so I know my perpendicular will have to be negative. I also know that my original slope was 1 half, and the reciprocal of 1 half is 2. So I know that the slope I'm going to use is negative 2, because that's the opposite reciprocal to 1 half. So if I have my mx plus b again right here, I can plug 1 in for y, negative 2 for m, because that's my perpendicular slope, negative 1 for x, and I'm solving for that new b. So 1 equals 2 plus b means I can subtract 2 from both sides, and b ends up being negative 1 right there. So my, my, with my new slope and my new y-intercept, I can write the equation of my perpendicular line, negative 2x minus 1. 
So this line is perpendicular to this line, and this new line passes through this point, negative 1, 1. So the solution for number 31 is the line with the equation y equals negative 2x minus 1. And number 32 is the final problem of my parallel and perpendicular line section. So we know our new line is going to pass through negative 5, negative 1, so I have an x value and a y value I can use. I also know it's going to be perpendicular to this, so my, again with the perpendicular symbol, to y equals negative x. Well, what's the slope right here, this line? It seems like this slope is negative 1, because if we squeezed a 1 in there, so what would the perpendicular slope become? Well, again, for perpendicular slopes, we change the sign. So instead of being negative, this guy will be positive. And we also reciprocate it. So 1, so the reciprocal of 1 is just 1. So we know the perpendicular slope, or the new slope we're going to use, is a positive 1. So again, y equals mx plus b. We can go ahead and plug this stuff in. For y, we get negative 1. And then m, our new one, is a positive 1. Our x is a negative 5. And the b is what we're solving for. So negative 1 equals negative 5 plus b. I can add 5 to both sides. So b ends up becoming a 4, a positive 4. So now I can write my equation. I know my slope is a positive 1x and then plus 4 for my y-intercept. But don't really want to write that stuff. So I'm just going to write x plus 4, and that will be the solution to number 32, the equation y equals x plus 4, which is perpendicular to my original line and passes through this point, negative 5, negative 1.